there, my name is Emma, and if you're new here, welcome to my channel. I make weekly videos on DIY, upcycling, and art, so if that interests you, make sure you like and subscribe. I recently tried to make my own watercolor palette complete with hand-mixed watercolors made out of old eyeshadow. This was my first time trying to make watercolors myself and it was actually way easier than I thought and I'm so glad that I was able to make use out of old eyeshadow that I don't wear anymore. And without further ado, here's how I made my own watercolor palette. Started off by sanding a piece of scrap wood from Eleanor's collection. If you've been following me for a while, you might know what that is, but I bought some wood off Facebook Marketplace from an artist named Eleanor who lived to be 101. And this is one of those pieces that I sanded into the shape of a palette. I then traced it out because I want to use a piece of stained glass for a little mixing sheet on the edge so I can mix the watercolors as I'm painting. I sketched out a little blob shape that'll go just on the very edge of the palette and cut it out and was able to trace it onto the stained glass with a Sharpie. What's nice about glass is Sharpie will wipe right off of it. And then I took my glass cutter and pliers and tried the best I could to get off the big chunks, but I have a grinder, so I was able to use that to really refine the edges to give it a nice and smooth look. I then made a stencil for my palette where I traced out where I want all of the holes to go and cut that out as well. And then I am going to be using kind of an unconventional technique. I'm gonna take a mechanical pencil and I'm gonna make that lead really big and I'll press a hole and hopefully I'll be poking through the paper. That's why I'm kind of lifting up the paper to make sure I'm kind of poking through and going right in the center of each. And that's where I'm going to drill. So I'm making sure I'm making a tiny little mark and see that tiny point at the top of my drill bit. That is going to go right in the center of the marks that I just made. Making sure my drill is nice and even, I'm going to slowly drill down. Now you can do this as deep as you want. I didn't want to make a ton of pigment because I wasn't sure how this was going to go so I didn't make any of my holes very deep at all and I just generally tried to make them all the same depth. I was not very scientific about it but I just drilled a little bit down and I'm not going to worry about those teeny tiny holes in the middle of my holes. You can fill those with wood filler but I just left them. And so far, my palette is looking great. I did take some sandpaper to make sure any rough edges from my drilling were sanded out. I want it to look nice and even and professional. Then I took some wood filler and filled in any gaps on the edges. Because this was a piece of scrap wood and it was sitting outside for some time, there were some holes and some warping and I just filled it all with wood filler. Of course, we're going to need to seal our wood before we add any watercolor. And to do that, I took some clear acrylic paint and I ended up doing probably three or four light coats of this, making sure it was completely dry in between coats. You want to make sure you're getting those wells nice and coated because we don't want the paint seeping in. I also recommend getting the sides and the back of whatever piece of wood you're using, just because we're gonna be working with water and if you spill, you don't want anything getting warped or funky, especially because we're spending so much time on this. You want to make sure you're taking your time and adding as many any coats as possible. As I said, I did three or four. And now it's time to start mixing watercolors. You are going to need a sheet of glass and some palette knives and of course some old makeup or some sort of pigment. I'm using this palette that I have not used in years and I started by scraping some of the bronzer very carefully with my palette knife and I am just going to tip it over onto my glass. It doesn't have to be any specific type of glass. This was the top of a table. I do think a little bit thicker is better and it should be pretty smooth. Then I used my palette knife to break down any big chunks before I added my secret ingredient, which would be gum arabic. Of course, I didn't invent this technique myself. This is very common. You can get stuff that is in crystal form or liquid form. Of course, the liquid form is gonna be a little bit easier. There are plenty of tutorials out there. If you wanna be really fancy, you can also add honey and other ingredients, but I just used the plain gum Arabic. 
I did trial and error at first. I only added a tiny bit and it was way too thick and chunky and I just started adding it bit by bit to see what consistency worked for me and what I had in mind. As I went, I realized I did like it a little bit thinner. Now, as I was watching tutorials myself, I saw that you're supposed to mull it with ideally a special tool, but really any flat surface technically would be correct. I only did this this one time. Pretty much this is to break down all of the little tiny minuscule bumps. I found it wasn't super necessary. Of course, if you're like selling it or something, it might be a good idea to do that step. However, for the rest of them, I just skipped it. And you can tell it turned out super, super thick for all of the other ones. I did end up adding more gum Arabic. I really had to smooth this one down by hand, whereas all of the other ones were more self-leveling because they were thinner. In order to mix another color, you'll want to clean off your surface and your palette knives. It's nice to use two palette knives so you can kind of wipe them off of each other if that makes sense for my next color i chose this bright blue eyeshadow which i will never wear and i pretty much did the same technique as before breaking down the largest chunks with my palette knife before adding the gum arabic for this, I did about 50-50, 50% powder and 50% gum Arabic, and I really liked the texture a lot more, and it was a lot easier to do rather than adding little bits bit by bit. But instead of the mulling, as you can see, I'm just smoothing it out with my palette knife and then scraping it back up, and I found that this technique was good enough for me at least. <laughs> An expert might disagree with you, but I found that it wasn't really necessary to use anything other than the palette knife. You can tell this is a little bit better with the self-leveling aspect, but I could still go a little bit thinner. And to remove any bubbles that might have occurred, I tried to tap the bottom of it. There weren't too many bubbles for this though. I also had some liquid watercolor that I wanted to see if I could make into the same texture to fill my palette. So I tried to mix two different colors, this green and this yellow, and I still added some gum Arabic to give it that nice liquidy texture. I did the same thing where I mixed it all up and I did this for a few minutes to make sure it was fully integrated something I would say is make sure you're mixing enough because for a few of these I did have to go back and mix more which was kind of frustrating and here is what the finished palette looks like you can tell it dried down a little bit and got concave which is totally fine with me I then grabbed my stained glass which I'll be gluing on with some e6000 I just added a little bit of glue to the back and carefully placed it on there and I think it's gonna stay just fine the end result is very aesthetically pleasing which i was kind of surprised about i didn't know what exactly to expect but i love the way it turned out and it was super functional i was able to paint this little snail and mushroom combination i love the added mixing sheet i think that was super super helpful and you don't necessarily have to do that but that is probably my favorite part of it because it was so convenient some normal palettes that you can get at the store don't even have a, like a great place for mixing so it was really nice to have uh, this snail is actually available in my etsy shop as a sticker if you're interested but here is the final result it is so cute i was seriously so surprised at how well the pigments turned out they were really thick and strong. I thought it was gonna be totally watery and a mess, but they turned out really well. I would actually use this if I were looking for those colors. I'm so amazed at how well it turned out. I had such a fun time making this and I hope you enjoyed watching the process. Thank you so much for watching and happy making.